Okay, it is recording. Okay, um, hello everyone. This is Kwa again. And um, yeah, today I'm going to make my one of the first video to cover uh, management of care, HESI. So this specifically um, targeted the portion of the management of care um, for HESI techers and also uh, management of care mock is also a very big portion in the NCLEX exam. Um, this has about 17 to 23% uh, of the questions in the NCLEX exam. So this is a, one of the biggest portions um, and it's very important that we master this content. Personally, I felt that management of care was the majority of the questions that I took when I took the NCLEX. So this will be a really helpful sessions to review prioritizations, ethics, legals, um, and um, like who to see first and delegations as well. Um, that is why I really want you guys to master this content because it's really big in NCLEX. And that's, and that's why we have a whole HESI dedicated for this portion. Okay. Mm, uh, moreover, the management of care HESI, talking a little bit about my experience taking the management of care HESI, um, when, when I take transitions, uh, nursing course was that is the hardest simply because it's the whole test is very specific. Um, you have constantly have prioritized questions and questions regarding to like delegations and stuff. So you have to really strong on critical thinking and also know your stuff to do good at this test. Personally, um, I did not get a 900 on this HESI. I got an 860 something, 164, uh, which was really um, disappointed, but um, I learned a lot from that HESI and um, I was able to uh, improve a lot uh, after reading the uh, what I got wrong from that HESI and um, changes my way of studying after that HESI. So I really hope that um, today, the material that I used to learn for that HESI and also what I learned after taking the exam will be very helpful for you guys in um, becoming more prepared toward taking this HESI and ace the HESI, uh, the mock HESI, uh, not like I did, <laughs> um, ace it, get more than 900. Okay, um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can go ahead and get started. Uh, okay, over here. All right, so my face is right here. And again, thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, before I start the tutoring, I really want to thank you all so much for your support and um, for all of your uh, congratulate on the Facebook post uh, that I made in the group. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I'm really happy to be back uh, and uh, help you guys. So I hope this will be helpful and I hope um, you guys can take something out of this and be a little bit better prepared. Okay, let me go ahead and start the section. Okay, so management of care mock history review session. So again, like I mentioned earlier, content, this is very important aspect of all major upcoming tests is management of care because in the CAT, the exit HESI, the, um, the NCLEX, they all have prioritizations. They all have delegation. You, they always ask you, which patient do you see first? What do you give? What task do you give to the LPN or delegate to the LPN or delegate to the UAP? Um, and of course, ethics and legals are always there. And so, yeah, you guys have to be strong on this because these are ethics and legals are easy question. You guys don't want to, don't want to miss it when you guys take the NCLEX. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so first of all, we have scope of practice. Let me, I'm so sorry. Okay. 
Okay, first and foremost, we have scope of practice delegation. So I, these are what I combine from my notes and also my experience and from doing tons and tons of practice questions. Um, so I really hope this is helpful. So the scope of practice of the RN, the LVN, and the UAP, what RN can do, RN can do central line. Um, they can centralize, of course, this, the RN does, is not the person who put in the central line, that's the doctor roles. But what the RN can do is that that she can clean the central line and uh, hook the medication to the central line. So that is the task of the RN and she cannot delegate central line to LVN, okay? Um, RN do IV medication, anything relating to IV medication are RN tasks. LVN do not do any IV med. Um, complex patient, of course, any patient that are post-operative, the first 12 hours is the most important um, for uh, it's the most important because they are really at risk for immediate bleeding, uh, hemorrhage, post-op. Um, so that is the RN task as well. RN take care of unstable patients, patients that have changes in their status. Uh, some of the words that describe unstable patient, including suddenly worsening newly developed symptom. So if you guys see these words inside the answer choices and they ask, um, give it to an RN or LVN, these words mean that they are complex and unstable, so you guys have to give it to an RN. Uh, blood transfusion, the only, only RN can do it. LVN cannot do it. Post-stroke, um, first 12 hours, some, uh, another term for stroke is CVA, uh, cerebral vascular, um, yeah, something like that, I forget. Um, but post-stroke CVA, first 12 hours is critical. Um, so do not delegate as well. Um, discharge, discharge uh, is only task of an RN as well. So if the question asks something about discharge a patient, do not give it to or delegate to an LVN. Anything that is assess, analysis, evaluate, teaching, making nursing judgment, these cannot be delegated. Okay, again, teaching and education is the RN jobs. The LVN cannot teach. Um, next, we move on to LVN. LVN, what they can do. Dressing changes, suctioning, sterile techniques. You guys see that I write really specific here. This is because I've done so many practice questions and I've came across these questions in my NCLEX as well. So I believe that knowing this specific scenario will be much more helpful than knowing like the general, like, okay, LVN cannot do like assessment, cannot do teaching. Obviously we know that, but like these are the specific situations that they give you guys in the questions. So I think that it's, it's more helpful that way. Um, I know it's a lot, but... Um, yeah, we got this, right? Um, again, dressing changes, LVN can do it. Suctioning, LVN can do it. Sterile techniques, LVN can do it. I remember I got this question wrong in my uh, exit HESI that I didn't think that LVN could do sterile techniques. So, but LVN can. It is uh, uh, in the scope of practice on LVN. Urinary cath, um, oral, subcutaneous, and IM intramuscular, uh, medication, LVN can give vaccine. However, the only medication that LVN cannot give is um, IV medications. LVN can do piggyback, meaning that the patient already have an IV line, a peripheral line, and then the, L the LVN can just um, uh, hook the, uh, um, what's it called? The, 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 the primary back with the piggyback, the secondary back. Uh, the LVN can do that. Uh, LVN can do colostomy irrigate Ir irrigations, uh, cl cleaning the stoma, um, straight cath. Uh, LVN can collect blood sample, but cannot um, like do the blood transfusion. Or this is another thing really important. An RN, when they do the blood transfusion, they need another RN to, um, to verify uh, and read back. An LVN are not, are not correct. If that person in LVN and that person helping you reading back, that's a wrong situation. You need an RN. You need a signature of an RN when you do blood transfusion because remember, we need two people to verify the type cross, all that kind of things. Um, and then LVN can administer oxygen. 
LVN cannot teach, but they can reinforce teaching. So when you guys reading the questions, you guys, please, please, please make sure that you guys read it really carefully. Reinforce that is in the within the scope of practice of LVN and LVN can do NG2 feeding. OK, next move on to UAP. These are CNA, our CNA, uh, the backbone of the hospital. Um, I, UAP can do basic cares, uh, grooming, cleaning the patient, um, bathing the patient's uh, range of motions, ambulation, grooming, hygiene measures, urine stool specimen. They can collect urine and stool specimen. Uh, they can go to pharmacy and pick up the medication. Uh, they can apply uh, SCDs. They can take the vital side, only stable patients, okay? And they can do feeding stable patients. They cannot feed someone who are dysphagia or who post or who are post uh, CVA post-stroke, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so you know me, I'm just always very extra. So of course I have to do another slide. What they cannot do. LVN cannot, again, this is just reinforce you guys, just to expose you guys, to make sure you guys listen back at it again. Uh, so LVN cannot start IV, again, hang, hang or mix IV mat or push IV mat. IV mat is a no-no for LVN. Blood transfusion or central line uh, cannot do. LVN cannot make care plan. They cannot develop teaching, educate, or assess. They cannot take care of unstable patient and they cannot perform first of anything. For example, um, first dressing change, uh, for example, first uh, two feeding, they cannot do the first two feeding. Um, they cannot discharge the patient. They cannot do the first assessment after a change. And also, I forget to write them down, but please listen to me, LVN cannot do new assessment. The new assessment is only an RN job. Anything new assessment, immediately RN. Anything discharge, immediately RN, okay? UA, oops, what the hell? UAP, what they cannot do? UAP cannot, you can be, UAP can charge, but they can only charge what they did, not about the patient. Um, for example, they can charge, the side rail is up, bed is lowered, but they cannot document or charge that the patient is less anxious, tolerated, or ambulating well. They cannot charge that. Medication administration is a no-no for UAP. They cannot administer medication of any kind. Um, yeah, if not even um, corticosteroid cream, those are a no-no. So never do any ADL task first. So anytime you guys see the first word in the answer choices, that is an RN job. Example, angina with crossing substernal chest pain three days ago on nitroglycerin. These, what, with this example, who would we give it to? We would give it to an LPN. The reason why, even though substernal chest pain, oh my God, is it maybe cardiac heart attack? But this patient already have a treatment on a treatment and it's already happened three days ago. It's not like, okay, eight hours ago or one day post-op or one day um, only. So this is something that an LPN can take care of. This is a patient that the LPN can, can take care of, okay? They already on the treatment and it is expected, the pain in China. Um, okay, let's move on. So ethics. So again, like I mentioned earlier, ethics is something that is easy and guineas. You guys have to know these by heart, by heart. I have questions like this on NCLEX and I'm so happy to have them. Um, so yeah, common test and this, these will come in the mock as well because these are parts of the mocks. Ethics, Autonomy, patient right for self determinations. So not only that you guys have to know like what does it mean, but also know how does it come in the answer choices, you know, because they will not give you, okay, patient right for self determination. 
and then you guys able to pick autonomy or vice versa. You guys have to know, okay, autonomy is that the nurse will give the patient the ability to choose or to do what they want. So self-determination. So yeah, veracity is telling the truth. The nurse have to provide the true information to the patient. Patient um, cannot lie to the patient. Fidelity is do what one has promised. So people always mix up fidelity and veracity. So please make sure that you guys know the difference between them. Fidelity is do what one has promised. A nurse promised the patient will come, they, they will come back after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, please coming back. That is fidelity. Beneficent, taking action to help other. And then maleficent is doing no harm. At first, when I studied this, I was like, Beneficent and Maleficent, that's the same thing. But for the NCLEX, HESI 6, they are two different things. So know some of the examples that um, which are which. So Beneficent, taking action to help others. You, in, you purposely, intentionally taking an action to do good, to promote goodness in the patient. For example, giving them immunization. The nurse actually doing the action and teach about how to do it. Remember, action. Non-maleficent is to do no harm. Do no harm is like therapeutic listening, uh, things like that. You don't do things that are harmful to the patients. Next, legal. Okay, so these are all gimme as well. These are either you know or you know. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't know. So I really want you guys to know. Um, and these are like some of the one that is very popular. That's why I picked it here because I don't want to go too much. Uh, I want you guys to focus and be good at these. Battery, the act of intentionally touching another body without that person consent, meaning that the nurse gives this patient um, an IM injection without they agreeing to, or the nurse um, hurt this patient, hit this patient, uh, that is battery. Assault is threatened, putting someone in fear of harmful offensive contact. If you don't drink your medication, I will put you in seclusion. So here, the nurse did not do or put the patient in seclusion. The only thing that the nurse do is put the patient in fear and threatening the patient. So threatening is the key word here in assault. So please know the difference between assault and battery. It will be on the exam. Next is defamation. Defamation, um, it comes in two. Uh, defamation is basically damaging somebody's um, uh, reputation. And so libel is written, published damage to reputation of someone. And slander is verbal that causes damage to someone's reputation. Okay, so slander, verbal, libel, written. Uh, next we have malpractice. Malpractice is failure to meet the standard of acceptable care that results in harm of another person. And negligence is fall below the standard of care or omission act. Um, they are not necessarily the same. Malpractice is something that usually um, uh, results in a harm in the patient. And negligence is like the nurse just didn't do um, to the standard that they are expected to do. Example. Malpractice is, is failed to perform procedure the nurse was intended to complete. The nurse action led to injury or the death of the patient. A nurse malpractice claim will be filed. Uh, failing to assess and monitor the patient is negligence. Or, and giving wrong medication is malpractice. Next, more legal. We heard about nerve practice acts so many times. Just remember, you guys protect the public. That's what they do. Protect the public. Nurse practice act do not protect the nurse. And if they give you a select or apply question about nurse practice act, these are the three things that they do. So I'm pretty, I combine it for you guys. So provide education for nurses, scope of practice for nurses, and protect the public. So these are the three things that they're, um, the, um, nurse practice act do, but the key thing is protect the public. When being asked to flow, this is a infamous questions that always come in all of, in my mock um, and all of the practice that I do. 
So when being asked to float, the nurse cannot refuse. What is float? Float meaning that you work in like a specific unit and you ask to float to another unit can be the same or can be a different. Maybe you work in labor and delivery and they float you to message or you can, they can float to a uh, newborn. So you have to uh, accept, you cannot refuse legally. Um, and so usually what will you do if you don't feel confident or the nurse is not, the question says the nurse is not confident, then you will report to the float unit like you are asked to do. Uh, you inform the supervisor of that unit of your lack of experience in that specialty, stating like I am from labor and, delivery, labor and delivery, that is my background, or I'm from trauma ICU, that is my background, and coming here to the burn unit, um, this is not my background, and um, um, I just wanted to let you to know that. So um, if you come across a question about which patient to give to a float nurse, we give the patient that match their specialty or the most stable on the unit. So that's the key to choose the answer, okay? So again, if the question is asking which out of these four patients is best to, given, to, to be given for a float nurse, uh, then you will give a patient that match the specialty. For example, uh, the, the float nurse is from a burn unit and they float to a message unit. And okay, the, out of these four patients, there was one patient have a secondary burn that we will give to that nurse. Or if they don't have anybody that matches their um, specialty, then we'll give the one that is most stable. Also, when giving assignment for a new graduate nurse, also choose most stable patients because they have no experience. Next, doctor prescription. These are important as well. You guys have, so this come in the type of questions like they give you this doctor long doctor order or they give you a question which of these order are correct or which of these order need clarification. Then you guys have to pick uh, one out of them. So they're usually giving you four answer choices and then um, um, four different orders and then you have to pick the one that needs clarification or the one that is correct. So the correct, so there are two types, in writing and over the phone. So in writing is date, time, medical medication name, dosage, route, frequency, and doctor signature. Please make sure that the order in writing is consists of all of these six components, then it is correct. If it missed dosage, if it missed the route, if it if doesn't have a frequency or doesn't have, and missing any of these, any one of these is wrong and need clarification. The need, nurse needs to clarify again with the doctor. Next, if it's over the phone, the nurse have to date the time of the entry when the nurse talked to the doctor and when the nurse entered the prescription. And then the nurse must repeat the prescription and record the prescription was over the phone. Nurse have to do this. And then the key thing is to have to document that read back was performed. Read back was performed, okay? Don't ever forget that. And then write doctor name and sign, okay? Missing any component of that is wrong. Okay. So I know these are really like, like, you know, like easy stuff, but honestly, these are important stuff to know. So like, um, that's, that's why the mock is quite challenging. It's not like theory based. It's, it's not like message, but it's more like um, general idea and like, you know, general knowledge. So, okay. So you guys, so these are what I have combined for you guys. So, um, I believe this will be really helpful. Okay, next we have issues at work. Sounds funny, right? But it does happen. If the nurse is suspecting a coworker is abusing alcohol or drugs, the nurse must report to the individual to the nurse, the must, I'm sorry, the nurse must report the individual to the nurse supervisor, okay? Must report the individual to the nurse supervisor. Okay. Do not talk to the coworker. Any kind. If 
Okay, for example, the question, the nurse smell alcohol in their coworker or the nurse enter medication room and see a patient is diverting opioid. Then do not engage or confront that nurse. What you choose is report the individual to the nurse supervisor. Report individual to the nurse supervisor. Okay, next is the staff doing something illegal? If answer is yes, then tell supervisor. If what the staff is doing not illegal, they ask yourself, then ask yourself when you read the question, does the patient, the coworker or other staff mem members is in immediate physical or psychological harm? If the answer is yes, then you confront that person immediately and take over. For example, if the nurse is performing a sterile technique and she break the sterile techniques, but she's still continuing doing the procedure, putting the straight cat in or cleaning the central line, for example, then you as a nurse supervisor or you as a coworker have to confront them immediately to stop that procedure and tell her that, okay, you break the sterile technique, please redo it. So for example, if no one is in harm's way, ask yourself if this behavior is simply inappropriate. If so, talk to that particular staff at a later time about the incident. So I remember on my NCLEX, there was a question about this. So the nurse take a lunch break later than the time. And then as a nurse, you have to call for, for that late nurse for many days already. What would you do? You would come and talk to that nurse, okay? come and talk to that nurse. Do not report this to a supervisor. <laughs> Don't pick that, okay? Next, uh, okay, some example again. You suspect the RN is diverting narcotic, tell supervisor. The aide is giving perineal care to the patient, not wearing gloves. Then you confront and take over the task. The RN is going home with bulging pocket, tell supervisor. You notice surgeon contaminate her gloves, confront. The RN always give report, always say exacerbation instead of exacerbation. Talk to them later. Okay, we're doing great so far. Um, what do what to do when a patient falls? So this is a particular particular situation that I have on my mock. So that's why I want to bring it up again because we never know if they come back or not. Um, first thing first to do, never ever when you guys see a patient fall bring them back up to the bed immediately leave them there on the ground okay i made the same mistake in stimulation so now i remember for my life so never bring the patient back uh, to the bed when they fall uh, what you always do is first take the vital sign second assess for injury third assist back the patient back to the bed with at least two more nurses or healthcare worker, do not do it by yourself. Fourth is make an occurrence report or an incident report. No reference should be made to the report form in the client record. So none of this report, occurrence or variance or incident are going to the client record. The only documentation that a nurse do is what they actually observe. Okay, you come in the patient, you see the patient on the ground, you put, you see the patient on the ground. You don't say the patient fall. Example, client found on the floor, vital sign assessed, doctor notified, and any follow-up care was rendered. So anything that you do for the patient after um, doctor notified, then you put it in as a documentation. Okay, oh, so yeah, we're doing good so far, guys. Let's move on. Next, more legal. Okay, advanced directive. So you guys have to know the difference between this, you guys. Written document and living will. I mean, written document is living will, but you have to know the difference between living will and power of attorney. So written document advanced directive is basically uh, to provide direction concerning the provision of care when a patient is unstable to make their own treatment or choices. Living will and power of attorney. This could be friend, family, relatives, and there are two kind of advanced 
And these living will empower attorney, attorney are the two advanced directive. And remember, they can be changed anytime. Power of attorney is equal healthcare proxy. So basically, living will is something that the patient um, wish to do when they are incapable of doing, like wish to be done to them when they're incapable of making decisions. And power of attorney or healthcare proxy is they're delegating their um, making the decision making process to somebody that they trust. And remember, the power of attorney can be friend, family, or relative. It's okay if it is a, it's not a family, okay? Okay, some more random stuff. So discharge planning begins when the patient admitted to the hospital. I know this is so fundamental, but it's in management of care, so I have to put it in. How can the nurse must address as an advanced practice nurse? They must obtain a master degree in nursing or above. Um, so this question came up in my uh, mock SC, so that's why I put it here. Uh, Evidence-based practice, the nurse integrate the patient preference, expertise, best research evidence to deliver quality care. So you guys have to know what those evidence-based practice mean. They will ask it, I'm so sure. And um, EBP staff, like the different step of um, making an evidence-based practice project. The first step is asking a clinical questions. Second, collect the best and the most relevant evidence critically appraise the evidence, apply integrate evidence along with clinical expertise, preference and value in making practice decision. Number five is evaluating and number six is communicating result. So, you know, either you know, either you don't. So I put it there. Next, we have transfer report. So how do we report when we transfer a patient? can given through phone and must include the patient name, age, primary healthcare provider, diagnosis, health status, plan of care, request, needs, priorities, any pertinent assessment or interventions. Like abnormal lab or something like that, you know? Okay, next we have, when can a patient health information be shared? So we all know that HIPAA, patient confident, confident, confidentiality, that we cannot share the patient information, do not talk in the living room, do not talk in the elevator or the cafeteria. We all know that. Obviously, you don't do that, especially when it's written on the test. However, there are certain cases when private patient, private healthcare information is can be released when and HIPAA allowed. And these situations are for healthcare payment purpose, healthcare treatment purpose, and healthcare benefit. Okay. Next, okay, talking about consent. It's important you guys know about consent, okay? Um, there will be at least one or two questions in the exam. I'm so sure. Um, consent, the doctor is the person who obtained the consent. The nurse is the person who witnessed the content consent, and the patient must not be under any influence of CNS depression drugs. We all know that. Okay. Now is the thing that the situation that they usually give in the test that I remembered. For example, if the patient signed consent and later said, I want more information, or asked, they don't understand still. No, what does what does the nurse must do in that situation? Notify the doctor, surgeon. Also, they can cancel the operation anytime, okay? So I have this question throughout my practice, throughout my exam, I don't remember, but I know it's there. So I'm glad to share with you guys. When can a minor give legal consent without guardians or parents? This is huge. Please remember this. This is when a person is under 18, but can give legal consent without guardian or parent. First of all, they are emancipated. Emancipated meaning that they are legally um, able to legal give legal consent because of the court order. That means emancipated. But there are other cases as well. By marriage, if they already married 
they are able to give their own legal consent without legal guardian, even though they're less than 18 years old. Armed force, military, court order emancipated, okay. Lastly is pregnant. Pregnant woman can give legal consent to the children. Anything she do to her baby is her own choice. The parents cannot have an, they can have input, but they cannot choose or give uh, consent um, for that person, even though that is a 12 years old girl who are pregnant, 13 years old girl who are pregnant, they able to give legal consent for their own daughter or son or baby. Teenager can obtain contraceptive without parent consent. I remember this question on my NCLEX. They asked regarding this teenager coming in asking for contraceptives. And they asked that the nurse they cannot, should they ask the nurse not to tell her parents. And legally, the nurse cannot tell her parents because regarding contraceptives, the teenager can, can get it without guardians and does not need to report it to their guardian. Teenager STD test does not need to be reported back to the parents as well, okay? No parents or legal guardian needed if the teenager is doing STI or aid testing or they are substance abuse. There are no need to tell the parent or legally you're not, you're not required to tell the parents. And if the teenager doesn't want you to, you are not allowed to, okay? Next, prevention. So no the different kind, primary, secondary, tertiary. I know you guys are a tech community, so you guys know what it is. So just a little reinforcement. Again, primary is teaching vaccine, um, actively doing something to prevent the disease from happening. That is primary. Secondary is testing, screening, biopsy, mammogram, colonoscopy. If you see any of these kind, any test, any kind of test, that's secondary prevention. Tertiary is already has the disease, so prevent it from getting worse. For example, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Next, we have prioritization, the famous question of which patient you should see first. So there's no like magic content that I can share with you guys that you guys will be able to ace this part because it's really critical thinking. And even myself, I make mistake many times when I do practice questions, I pick the wrong patient to see first because there are simply situation that you think that it's a prioritized, but it is not. So however, here are the best, one of the best tips and advices and information that I gather from all of my test practicing and hours of YouTube video and learning. Um, so yeah, what to pick? You pick new as admission. Every time if there's a new admission, that is mean that that patient need prioritization. You pick new admission, even they if they have no complaint. Example, the patient was admitted moments ago or newly admitted with shortness of breath or abdominal pain or whatsoever, I don't care. Newly admitted, we, see them first, okay? Pick unstable blood pressure, pick acute. Anything that have unstable or acute, you picked it. Pick fresh post-operative first 12 hours. The first 12 hour is so critical. So you have to pick, um, you have to pick it, okay? Next, how to determine if a patient is stable or unstable, okay? So I told you guys, pick unstable. How do we know they are unstable? Focus on the side, on the right side first. We know a patient is unstable because in the answer choice, they have an acute illness. What is acute illness? Acute respiratory distress, acute kidney injury, anything they have acute, you see them first, okay? Uh, sepsis is also acute, okay? Post-op less than 12 hours. General anesthesia in the first 12 hours. Remember, general anesthesia in the first 12 hours, those patients are unstable. INR in the four, um, in the four seconds. Uh, K in the six. Potassium, if it's more than six, it's really, really dangerous because it can cause um, pig T wave and causes um, lethal cardiac arrhythmia. 
um, and pH in the six uh, because that is so acidic that will damage the blood vessel and damage the every organs that it go through because the blood is so acidic. Carbon dioxide in the 50 because carbon dioxide brings acidity, acidity to the blood. Low oxygenation stat, less than like 80, less than like 89%, then usually that is like bad. High white blood count, low in ANC, remember less than 1500 is bad. Low CD4, okay, the thing about CD4 is, I remember I have a question about CD4 and HIV and AIDS. So if HIV converting to AIDS is the only time that they're converting HIV to AIDS is uh, when CD4 is less than 200. Okay. If it's like 300, okay, that patient, that person still in HIV state, they do not progress to eight yet. So please remember that. Good tips. Um, low platelets, less than 40,000. Okay. Next we have newly diagnosed. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my mistake. Low platelet, less than a hundred thousand, I think. Yeah. Less than a hundred thousand because um, if you give Lovonox and low platelet is less than 100,000, you don't give Lovonox. Oh, but if it's, the patient will not be unstable, if the low, it will be, uh, the patient is unstable if the platelet is less than 40,000. My bad, that is correct. Less than 40,000, that means that the patient is critically unstable and they are at an incredibly high risk for bleeding. So that is correct. Ooh. Okay, next we have newly diagnosed, newly admitted, not ready for discharge, admitted less than 24 hours ago. Those are unstable patients. So you guys pick that patient, those patients, you can choose that patient first. Changing or change assessment, experiencing unexpected sudden relief of pain from appendicitis, hemorrhage excessively. Okay, there's another tip that I remember from just now. I remember I was doing a um a question a prior a priority questions when they give you sign symptom of a labor woman who presenting sign symptom of preeclampsia meaning they are edema high blood pressure um, protein in the urine pick that patient any patient that are preeclampsia they are at high risk for seizure and seizure is a priority so please pick that if the woman labor uh, pregnant woman uh, presenting sign symptom of preeclampsia, edema, protein, the urine, high blood pressure, pick that person. They are priorities. Okay. And remember, even though the woman already give birth to the baby, they still at risk for preeclampsia up to six weeks after the, uh, after the postpartum, after the delivery of the baby. So even though they are, they are not pregnant women or they are postpartum women and they showing signs of a preeclampsia, um, you have to, um, yeah, prioritize that patient. Okay, how do you know when a patient is stable so that you won't pick them? Chronic illness, COPD is chronic, chronic, literally say chronic, COPD. Um, Post-op greater than 12 hours, local original anesthesis, ready for discharge, to be discharged, admitted longer than 24 hours, unchanged assessment, experience typical expected sign symptom of disease with which they were diagnosed. Okay, for example, angina and chest pain, that is expected, so you don't pick them. You pick something that is unexpected, okay? Okay, next. What always make a patient unstable? Hemorrhage. The word hemorrhage, not just bleeding, hemorrhage, or bleeding excessively, or um, like having like multiple pads in one hour. Um, high fevers over 105 uh, Fahrenheit or 104 can lead to seizure. Hypoglycemia can lead to brain damage. Postless or breastless, example, V-fib, Assistly or VTEX polis, those are unstable patients. And if you guys see any of these, pick them, please. Next, who do you see first? 
okay, so this is just continue. So these are some of more ex my experience because this part will come a lot. Prioritization comes so many in my NCLEX exam. Um, unconscious comma, airway issues, choking, trach deviation. And remember, trach will deviate to the good side. Yeah. And the reason why it's deviated is because of pneumotension or um, the air in the other chest is the other the other lungs is not working. So that's why it's deviated. And it's deviated on to the good side. Decrease LOC, anaphylactic, breathing issues include hypoxia, restlessness, pulmonary embolism, seizures, cardio, um, carbon dioxide inhalation from fire and drug overdose. Okay, carbon dioxide inhalation from fire, please remember that, okay? Uh, and also like know the sign symptom of carbon dioxide inhalation. For example, like cinch snow or like um, dark and around the mouth or the neck and also cherry red face. If someone who are carbon dioxide intoxicated, they will have a cherry red face. Uh, circulatory issues, hypovolemic shock, hemorrhage, pain from myocardial infection, stroke, DKA, additional adesinian crisis. These patients usually have critically low blood pressure. Thyroid storm, increased intracranial pressure, asystole, VFib, VTAC, infectious issues, sepsis, psych issues, suicide, who is suddenly happy, happy or pacing in the hallway, those patients are priority. So you see them first, okay? Any of these, you see them first. Okay, so S bar. Ooh, so why do I put it on here? The reason why is because I remember um, I had these questions and I did not do it correctly, even though it's so easy because I was careless at that moment, um, I didn't study. I thought I knew it, but I forget. So um, from my experience, please know it. Um, first we have situation, why are you calling right now? Um, so, as, so I'm sorry, so as far is basically how you communicate with the doctor um, when you call them. So you want to be organized and you want to have a system when you call a doctor so that you not, first of all, be hanged up on, or second of all is being embarrassed. So S stands for situation, and this is why you are calling right now. So a brief summary of the primary problem. B is background. So brief discussion on what has happened, re reason for admission, allergy, day of admission. A is assessment, of course, the word speaker itself. So recent set of vitals, labs, IVSS, pain, medication given. R is recommendation, what the nurse recommend a doctor to do, the plan of care or suggestions. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so here's an example. Hello, Dr. O, this is nurse C. I am calling about one of your patient in room 324. The patient is Mr. Jones. Situations, Mr. Jones is having an increased dyspnea, difficulty breathing and complaining of chest pain on the left chest. Background, he had her left hip replaced yesterday. He started complaining of chest pain about three hours ago. He's restless and short of breath. Assessment, his pulse is 155, blood pressure 134 over 57. He may be having a pulmonary embolism, coronary artery disease, precordial chest pain, or cardiac event. Recommendation, I recommend you see him immediately and start him on oxygen. Okay, let's move on. Triage. So you guys have to know how to triage in a disaster where there are multiple clients. The key word here is disaster and multiple clients. This is not in the emergency room in the, in the hospital. This is on the ground, on the road, on the mountains, on the hills, everywhere where accident happens, okay? So this is not inside the hospital. So please remember that. That's why it's triage differently in the hospital. If they ask you a triage questions and it's a disaster questions, always pick someone who are red first. Who are red does not necessarily mean that they have the most injury, but they have the higher chance of living if we give them 
emergent care. So pick the red first, then yellow, then green, black, you pick last, or you don't pick at all. So see your red first, your black last, your black last only in disaster triage, not in the hospital emergency. So red example, chest pain, decrease LOC, amputations, chemical splash to the eyes, require emergent treatment, priority in order to live. Yellow, uh, example, open fractures, with pose, large wound, the urgent treat within 30 minutes to two hours. Green, example, closed fractures, minor lacerations, injured but able to walk, can wait at least two hours. Black, example, unconscious, no or very low heart rate, not breathing or extremely irregular respiration, death or soon to be dead. So you don't pick this patient, okay? Next. Okay, this seems easy, but you know, with the stress of the test, when we're in the test, we usually forget and we pick the wrong one or they trick us. So that's why it's important to know what all the people do in the hospital. What does OT do? What does PT do? So that we can give them the, uh, sometimes the question asks you, so who, who of these person you should contact or collab with to help these specific patients? Um, just why you have to know what they do, okay? And these will be on the exam. So that's why I put it there, it here. If it's not on the exam, trust me, guy, I don't put it in my tutoring session because I don't have time and you guys don't have time either. Okay, so we do what it's going to be on there. OT, occupational therapist, fine motor, upper body, hands, dexterity, finger and wrist. They deal with ADLs. These are OT jobs. PT, physical therapist, gross motor, lower body, rehabilitation, rehab, uh, legs, bigger muscle. Okay, so the difference between OT and PT is the upper and lower body part. Um, ST, speech therapist. Speech therapists not only deal with speech problem, but they also uh, do a swallow evaluation. Next, we have case manager. Fine, case manager is the person who finds resources for patient needs at home, such as oxygen or wound care supplies. Social worker is the person who help with non-medical needs, such as food delivery and getting rights. Okay, some more tips. Never give opinion or advices, okay? If you guys see, and never ask why, okay? No, never. if the answer ask, have why in them, do not pick it. If the answer have never, if the answer have give opinion or advices, if I were you, um, I would stop crying. If I were you, I would take this medication. If I were you, I would go and see your daughter right now because you might die later. Do not do that. Okay, so we're coming toward the end and we're coming toward the end of the tutoring session and these are what I believe, what the hell? We, th these are what I believe that is will be really successful or good for you guys in order to practice these questions because I watched all of these YouTube up here before I took the management of care and it helped me tremendously. So I share with you guys today. Um, and yeah, do the mock, all the mock question in the past boy you guys purchase for the transition course. Watch all of these three YouTube video that I posted. It would be so amazing. One of the best one is Nexus Nursing and the second one is the Nursing Tutor video. Those are so good. Um, so please watch it, okay? I will put it, link it in the description box as well um, for you guys. So, um, okay, let's see if I have more. All right. So, so let me stop sharing my screen. So that is it, you guys. This is the tutor session for today for this uh, management of care. Uh, this is a huge part that you guys need to know. Um, and for this test, for every test, just be confident, you guys. Make sure you guys study, prepare for the test and believe in yourself. You are going to do amazing and um, just keep on studying. Practice question is key. 
but also reading rationale is key as well. So practice a lot of questions, do practice, 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 practice questions, and write out all the rationales, okay? Um, with that being said, uh, if you guys like the tutoring session, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I feel like an influencer now. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching, and um, um, I will try my best to post uh, more tutoring session regarding all the exam for you guys so you guys can prepare for it thank you so much for watching and bye now